Welcome, welcome. Are you in for a treat today? Today, you are going to be listening to a lecture by Aaron Katz. He's an author, of course, but also a leading speaker on memory intelligence. So I hope you're ready to learn something, but also have lots of fun while doing so. Now, for a bit of background about Aaron, did you know that when he was really young, he used to work on a kibbutz in a cow shed and he used to know all the cows' names off by heart. Later on, when he was working as a radar operator, he used to remember an infinite amount of numbers. However, now his wife does complain that sometimes he does forget to take out the rubbish, so, you know. His books, Secrets of a Super Memory and Five Gifts for the Mind, are bestsellers in four countries. Now, during this lecture, which he has recorded in Israel, especially for you, he is going to show you how to improve your memory. And it's, it looks a little bit like a magic trick, but it's not exactly very, very clever, just like Aaron himself, he's very clever too. Now, listen carefully during this lecture, because his tips are not only going to help you how to improve your memory now, for example, for exams or at school, but they will also help you when you're older. Enjoy. Hi and welcome participants of the Malta Book Fair. I'm really happy to meet you, at least virtually. My name is Iran Katz. I'm the author of several books. Where did Noah Park the Ark? Five Gifts for the Mind, Jerome Becomes a Genius. And my goal today is to teach you how to develop a superpower memory, emphasizing on the word super, because each and every one of us can really develop a great memory and I hope to prove it to you during our lecture today. First, the question. Do you remember what is the logo of Starbucks or a certain gas station in Malta? Most people have a hard time thinking and remembering these obvious facts. Things that we have seen several times a day. Why is it that we don't remember things that we have seen or heard sometimes several times a day? Well, to begin with, because we never paid attention to them. And we cannot remember something if we haven't paid attention to it to begin with. It happens in daily routines, you know, when we leave our uh, keys or cell phone somewhere and then we look for them and after several uh, minutes, seconds, we say, uh, okay, what it I do with the keys I just had in my hands. One second of attention, here, I put the keys here on the table, save, that's all we need. And our brain works like a computer. When we type a document, what do we do when we finish? We press save. Save is the pay attention button of our memory. It happens in daily routines, not only where we put our keys or what did we want to bring from the other room, but also, for example, you know, when we leave home and we think, did I lock the door? Did I uh, unplug the iron? Turn off the air condition? Develop a real simple habit. Each day when you leave home, lock the door, press the handle twice, and say out loud, I lock the door. I know the door is locked. Okay? And when you're going to bring something from the other room, focus on the task. And that is true in everything we do in life, okay? Go directly to your bedroom and get what you have to bring. If you're going to bring a book or some clothes, here's a little nice tip, a little crazy. Talk to the book. Call for it. Let the book know that you're coming to get him. Book, I'm coming, book. Wait, I'll be there very soon. I promise you, you will not forget what you wanted to do in the other room, okay? We live in a world full of distractions, a lot of them, and a lot of knowledge also. If you lived in the uh, 17th century, the sum total of all the information you would acquire throughout your lifetime equals one weekend edition of the New York Times. All the photos that were taken throughout history till 1955 equal two minutes that humanity posts on Instagram every day. That's how much information we have. 
So we have to get rid of the distractions, okay? When you're studying for an exam, get rid of distractions. Do not answer your phone. Do not look at messages, and I'll tell you why. Because if you're concentrated on studying, okay, and the phone rings, or you look at a message, and you type back, it will take you 15 minutes to reach the level of concentration you were before, okay? So put the phone aside, concentrate on what you have to learn. It's just like surfing on the beach at sea. You know, we catch a good wave. We won't stop because we have a text message or because we want to take a break. We have to take full of advantage of that wave. The same goes with studies. Take full advantage of the wave, that concentration wave you're in, okay? And only when it breaks. When you feel tired, then take a break. Now, when will we usually pay attention to things? Did you ever notice when you pay attention to something? When does that happen? Well, you know, when things are unusual, extraordinary, frightening, and when we have what I call a point of reference, when something resembles something else that we are already familiar with. What am I talking about? It's called, by the way, an association. If I ask you to draw the map of Belgium, or let's say uh, North Korea, I'm quite sure most of us will not be able to do that. However, Italy, what does Italy remind us? A boot, right? That's an association. You met Joseph, you call him Steve. The reason is that he looks exactly like a different Steve that you know. And associations come in all flavors and varieties. A good old Italian song can remind us of a certain period when we were sad or happy. The smell of apple pie can remind us of grandmother's home. Just like the smell of burned apple pie can remind us that grandmother did not really bake so well. Anyhow, the Romans came along many years ago. The Romans, the Greeks, uh, the ancient the Jews, they did not have cell phones, they did not have computers, they did not have uh, anything, actually. Technologically, I mean, not Zoom, nothing. You know what they had? A brain! And they said, okay, if we remember things merely by using these simple associations, let's do it on purpose. So now I'm going to teach you the basics, how to easily remember a random list of 10 items. And the list goes like this. Bed, fish, carpet, dress, dog, car, TV set, pot, cigarette, and trumpet. Okay? Can you repeat the list? Most people cannot do that. And I said it quite fast, actually. But I'm going to repeat the list again, and all you have to do is use your wild imagination because you're going to picture in your mind the most absurd, ridiculous things that you ever imagined, okay? Those of you who want to close their eyes are welcome to do so for concentration. And here we go. The first item on the list was bed. I would like you to imagine your bed at home. What does it look like? What do you have on the bed right now? Pillows, sheets, okay? You have the image of the bed. Next item is a fish. We will create an association between bed and fish. I would like you to imagine that in your lovely warm bed lies a huge, disgusting, stinky fish. Disgusting, terrible, isn't it? Great, because that's how we remember the best. Using the unusual and the extraordinary. A huge fish lying on the bed. You can imagine touching its wet, slippery skin. Okay, you imagine that? Good. Next item is a carpet. We will create now an association between fish and carpet. Imagine that in your bedroom, instead of a carpet, there is this big, flat fish lying on the floor and you're stepping on that slippery huge fish and falling on your behinds. Did you imagine that fish carpet? 
fish, flat fish is used as a carpet and we step on it and fall back. Fish carpet. Next item is dress. Carpet, dress. We always take the last item and the next item and create something. Okay, so carpet dress. Imagine your mother, a friend, leaving home instead of a dress has this uh, heavy carpet wrapped around the waist, walking and it's dragging everything from behind. No more dresses to wear today. They're all in the laundry. What we can wear is a carpet instead of a dress. Good. Moving on to dog. Now dress and dog. You're walking along the street when all of a sudden you see this dog with a pink dress flapping in the wind. Happy dog with a pink dress. By the way, do not try to recall the previous items, okay? Just concentrate on what I'm telling you to imagine. I promise you, you'll remember the list. We're moving on from dog to car. Dog car, once again, along the street, we see this BMW inside a bulldog driving his BMW, you know, with sunglasses, cool dog driving a car, a BMW. We're moving on to a TV set. So while driving along the highway in our car with our parents, all of a sudden we see this huge TV set passing us on the left hand side. We don't understand where this TV came in the middle of the highway. Did you imagine that scene? Good. Now we move on to pot. Okay, so we have TV and pot, like a plant pot. Remember once we had old TVs and boxes? So imagine that this old TV that we used to have doesn't work anymore. We took all the electronics out. We put some earth, dirt inside of it. We opened the top and there's now a plant growing out of the TV because the TV is used as a pot, TV pot. Now we move on to cigarette and I would like you to imagine a long cigarette stuck in the pot and imagine smoke coming out of that cigarette. And finally we have trumpet, not trump, trumpet, and we blow the trumpet and from it lots of cigarettes, you know, fly out as we blow the trumpet. And you have just remembered a random list of 10 items. Let's see if you remember. What was in the bed? You can say out loud. Fish, right? The fish was on the floor instead of a carpet. Carpet was used as a dress. Who had a dress? The dog. Where was the dog? In the car. What passed the car? TV set that was used as a pot. What was stuck in the pot? Cigarette that came out of a trumpet. Wonderful. So we learn how to remember a random list of items. Later on you'll see how this method and others help us remember things for exams, for school. But what we did actually is learn how to pay attention and to create associations. Now there's another nice kind of trick I like to do uh, in my lectures for uh, grown-ups, especially married couples. And then I invite two, three couples uh, up on stage, ask the men to stand up front, women behind them, and I ask each man, boyfriend, to describe exactly what his girlfriend is wearing. Dress, shoes, socks, earrings, necklace, and of course, this generates a lot of good laughs because most men do not remember what women wear. And why is it that men don't remember what women wear? Because it doesn't interest them. And I'm joking and I'm generalizing, I know, don't take me seriously. But what I want to mention is that we remember what interests us. That's the bottom line. We remember what interests us. We may not remember history or geography, but we will remember the names of, you know, the players in our football team and who scored when at what match. Be interested in the things you want to remember. 
Those who remember names and faces are genuinely interested in other people. They are friendly people. Those who remember license plates, figures, data, usually have better mathematical and technical skills. And those who are good at trivia are human beings who possess a high level of curiosity. So be interested in things and you'll see how easily you remember them. Now many times people tell me that they remember well what happened uh, 20, 30 years ago, I'm talking about grown-ups, but they don't remember very well what happened yesterday. I want to tell you what the reason is, so you will know it while you are still young. When we were kids, really small, everything was new and exciting, and as we grow up, you know, uh, we've seen everything, we've heard everything, we know everything. Nothing is engraved in our memory in the same vigorous and exciting intensity as when we were kids. So here's the greatest tip I can give you for life, not only memory. Be enthusiastic about daily things, really. Be excited, find interest in them. You'll see how easily you remember things and how the quality of your life improves. I hope you're enthusiastic now. But you may ask me and say, what, can we seriously be enthusiastic about everything? The answer is yes, and those who developed what I like to call artificial enthusiasm are the ancient, ancient uh, Jews. You know, I come from Israel. And I wrote a book called Jerome Becomes a Genius. It's about ancient Jewish techniques to have a better memory, uh, to develop brain power. And in Jewish schools, I'm talking about the religious ones, they learn in a way that you will not see anywhere else in the world. They do it while standing up and arguing, asking questions, moving a lot, not taking anything for granted. Okay? And that is a good advice for us. Have you ever studied for an exam while walking back and forth in your room? Do it. All this movement and exciting excitement generates blood flow to the brain, proven scientifically, okay? Do it because it will double the amount of information you can remember in half the time, okay? I'm talking about walking in the park, at home, back and forth while going over the material. Not studying while walking, that's not good. You can bump into a shelf or something. Revising material while walking, okay? It doubles the amount of information you can remember in half the time. It helps those who have ADD, ADHD, attention deficit disorders, and also those who have a PhD. Okay, so be interested, be enthusiastic. And another nice tip, be organized. It's easier for us to remember in bulks, in categories. It's easier to remember, you know, a random list of uh, supermarket items if we divide it into meat products, milk products, fruits, vegetables, sweets, okay? And also use acrostics and abbreviations to aid memory. For example, if you want to remember your access code or password or some formula in mathematics, let's say your access code for some kind of website is uh, PMBJ3K5. Now the problem is that our brain cannot remember something that it doesn't find meaning in. Okay, So PMBJ3K5 has no meaning. We have to create something meaningful. And the idea is to use these letters and numbers to create some kind of sentence, to say that each letter is the beginning of a word that creates a sentence. For example, PM, big J, big, big J, 3K5, PM, BJ, please make big John three glasses of K5, okay? And now you will remember, because you took something meaningless, you gave it meaning, something meaningful the brain can understand and only then remember. Now, I became interested in memory improvement actually when I was in high school. I grew up at Haifa. Haifa is a city in Israel with a nice beach. And 
I got not so good grades because, you know, I wanted to go to the beach. I remember the only good grade I got was A in philosophy. The teacher said I deserve an A in philosophy because I managed to prove to her that I do not exist. I also had all these philosophical questions at school. I remember asking the teacher once, if someone writes a book about failure, and the book doesn't sell well, is that a success? But what really interested me, are the employees of Lipton Tea allowed to take a coffee break? Anyhow, I became interested in these techniques it was my hobby, and that really, really helped me during high school and later on at the university. And I want to now actually teach you a really nice method to remember lots of information. We're going to do it in a nice way, okay? I'm going to teach you now interesting facts. These are real facts. I read them on the internet being sarcastic. Not everything on the internet is real. But these facts are real. You can check several sources about them. These are fun facts that I want to tell you. I will teach you how to remember them, okay? And next week, test your memory. See if you remember the facts, okay? Right now, just enjoy the facts. Don't try to remember anything. Just enjoy what I'm telling you. Fact number one. Cats. When a cat falls from the eighth floor upwards, okay, even two kilometers high, nothing happens to it. It lands safely on the ground. This is a real fact. The reason is when cats fall from a high distance, they turn into a parachute. They spread their arms, legs, the skin stretches, and they glide slowly to the ground. Cats and squirrels can do that. Seven floors downwards, they don't have time to become a parachute, so most chances uh, they will get hurt. And uh, if you have a cat at home, do not try this. Most cats uh, do not know this fact. Okay, that's fact number one. Fact number two, kangaroos. Did you know that kangaroos cannot go backwards? They can only move forwards. Why can't kangaroos go backwards? Well, they have a heavy, massive tail, you know. Sometimes they lean on it, and when they pick it up, they fall backwards. So they cannot go backwards. They can just move forwards. So that's fact number two, that kangaroos cannot go backwards. Fact number three. During the 70s, Space program began. Americans, the Russians, send you know their spaceships to the moon, to space, whatever. Now the Russian cosmonauts, they were Soviets back then, they took guns to space. Why did the Soviet cosmonauts take guns to space? What do you think? You have any idea? Maybe they will meet aliens? No. Let me tell you why. You have to think of the whole voyage from the beginning to the ending. Where did the Russians always land? Siberia, which is filled with forests. The Americans always landed at sea. They landed the Soviets in forests, so they took guns in case they come back from space, land in the forest, and encounter you know, a bear or a wolf. So that's why the Russians took guns to space. Fact number four. I know I'm bombarding you with facts, but don't worry. You're going to remember everything. Fact number four. Do you know where in the world most tigers live today? You'll be surprised. Not in Africa, not in Asia. There are 7,000 tigers who live as we speak in private homes in the United States. It is totally legal to have your own tiger at home in the United States, okay? It's also legal to buy their guns without license. I don't know why. 
So that's fact number four, that there are 7,000 tigers, the largest community of tigers. They actually live in private homes in the United States. And finally, um, the last fact. You know what, the last fact, I'll tell you a joke. Because we want to remember facts, jokes, stories, anecdotes. Okay, so I'll tell you a joke. I hope it's a funny joke. Not everybody laughs because my jokes are sometimes complicated. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you anyhow. A turtle, turtle, walks into a police station. He's very excited and nervous and frightened and, you know, overwhelmed. And uh, uh, the policeman asks him, what happened? And the turtle, all worked up, says, you won't believe it, but I was attacked by three snails. And the policeman says, do you have any, you know, visual description what these snails looked like? And the, the turtle says, no, everything happened so fast. Did you get the joke? Okay, I'll explain. Turtle, snails, fast. Okay, I hope you like the joke anyhow. I like the joke. Okay, now we have these facts and the amazing joke. And you want to remember them. Here's the greatest idea in memory improvement. The idea is to take information we want to remember and associate it, connect it to information we cannot forget. What can't we forget? Well, apparently studies show that we human beings really remember well locations. It's called the Roman room system or the method of loci, location in Latin. What am I talking about? If I ask you to point at your chin, Okay, that's not the sort of information you need to think and remember. Chin. Let me think about it. Where was my chin? Yes, chin. Yeah, chin is here. No, we know exactly that this is our chin. If you imagine your home, do you remember your bedroom? Where the bed is? What's next to the bed? Uh, window? Maybe your desk? So we remember locations, and the idea is to take new information we want to remember and associate it to information to locations we already know. So, right now, usually students, I tell them, choose your home, your school, because you remember the locations. They're right now, what is common between us is our body. So we'll choose locations on our body. I'd like you to uh, touch your head, okay? That's the first location. Move on to the nose. We'll take the shoulders, now uh, our uh, butt, okay, bottom, and our toes. So here we go, we have the head, we have the nose, we have shoulders, we have our bottom, and the toes. Now, when you study for exams, what do you usually do? You read something and highlight the main ideas, right? The key words. So let's say you have to take an exam about cats, okay? And all of a sudden you read this really interesting paragraph that cats fall from the eighth floor upwards and nothing happens to them. The key word here is falling cats. That will remind us the whole idea. Now you take the falling cats and imagine connect them to a location. Our first location is our head. So imagine that you're studying and all of a sudden, all these cats fall from the ceiling or from the sky, landing on your head. Imagine a cat lands on your head, okay? That will remind us that cats, from the eighth floor upwards, nothing happens to them. Good. Then you read about kangaroos. That kangaroos cannot go backwards, right? Okay, so we move to the nose, and imagine this uh, uh, kangaroo, you know, entering this kind of room and with his nose smelling, checking if this is the room he has to be in, but now he's stuck. Cannot go backwards, right? Has to find another exit or make a U-turn. So the kangaroo sniffing the room and gets stuck because it can't 
go backwards will remind us that kangaroos cannot go backwards. Then we learned that the Russians took guns to space, and I would like you to imagine that behind my shoulder there is a Russian cosmonaut, astronaut, you know, checking carefully that there are no bears or wolves right behind my soldier. Do you, do you see that cosmonaut right, right there? Okay, in your imagination, remember that, imagine that. Okay, and then we learned that there are 7,000 tigers in private homes in United States. We move from the shoulder to the next location, which is our bottom. And I would like you to imagine that you're riding a tiger, you know, like a rodeo. You're riding a tiger, and the tiger is trying to get you off its back. And all this movement will remind us that tigers... 7,000 of them live in private homes in the United States. And then we had this amazing, wonderful, funny joke about the turtle and the snails. And when we tell jokes, we also use keywords. Did you hear this uh, joke about uh, the turtle and the snails, right? So imagine a turtle biting your toes, okay? Like trying to warn you, Please help me, there are snails attacking me. And the snails are, you know, on the other side of uh, the leg. You can feel the snail on your uh, leg. That's also not so pleasant, I know. But later on, when you go to your exam, and this, of course, you can compare to the studies you need to learn for exams, the material. And then you go to the exam, and all you have to remember is locations and you let the locations remind you of the material so you're sitting in the exam and you're a little anxious and you're a little frightened and you're a little stressed but no problem you remember what your body looks like or your home looks like or your school looks like okay so what you do is you go over the locations what fell on the head here do you remember cats right and the snow who was that Smelling, sniffing around, kangaroo, what's the kangaroo's problem? Can't go backwards. Behind my shoulders, what was behind my shoulders? Not James Bond, but Soviet cosmonauts took guns to space. Our bottom, what did we ride? The tiger, what's the fact about the tiger? 7,000 tigers live in private homes. And finally, we have the joke, who bit our toes, the turtle, followed by the snakes who were attacking him, and you have a wonderful joke to tell this evening. This method can really change your life at school, because you take everything you need to remember, even the boring stuff, you make it interesting and funny, full of imagination and you connect it to locations, and you remember everything you want during the exam. And now the last thing we're gonna learn is how to remember languages, vocabulary. Because, you know, we, all our life, we try to improve our English and Italian and Arabic and Spanish, and people are afraid of languages. They have fear of speaking a foreign language. What are we afraid of? Really, honestly, what are we afraid of? To lose face, to be embarrassed, that people will, you know, make fun of us if we don't speak English correctly. And that is the greatest mistake in the history of learning languages. Let me tell you why. Let's say I don't speak English so well, and I'm pointing at a building there, and I tell you in not so good English, I to go building. I to go building. What do you understand? That I'm going to the building, right? Now, I can speak English really good and, and say to you, I'm about to commence on a notorious journey towards that formidable skyscraper over there. Which is exactly the same as I to go building. However, you didn't understand. And what is the purpose of language? to understand, to communicate. So speak, make mistakes, but speak. That's the only way to learn, okay? 
Just so you know that at every given moment, 70% of the English spoken around the world is between people that English is not their mother tongue. Pilots and uh, air controllers, Maltese and Japanese, everybody makes mistakes and it's fine. And by the way, since childhood, we sometimes learn the wrong vocabulary, the unnecessary vocabulary to make it fun. You know, like for example, the dog is brown. Let me assure you that you will never say that sentence in your lifetime. You will never go to London and all of a sudden, while you're walking with a friend, you will say to him, look, the dog is brown. Yeah, it's, it's kind of brown. Why are you telling me this? My wife, uh, she speaks French. And uh, one day we went to Paris. We went down to the metro and my wife approached the ticket counter and said to the lady there, Je voudrais acheter du billet pour le métro, s'il vous plaît. Which is, I would like to buy two tickets for the metro, please. Now, the next day we go back to the metro and I said to my wife, My dear wife, today I will buy the tickets. And she said, No, you, you don't speak French. And I said, let me try. I tell people they should try. And she said, no, you will embarrass us. Okay, so she stood 70 meters away from me, not to be associated with me. And I approached the ticket counter with confidence. And I smiled to the lady there. And I said to her, do. I got the same two tickets. No grammar and no vocabulary. Why am I telling you this? There are studies that show that we need only 1,000 words. 1,000 of the most popular, commonly used words in any language to read and understand any newspaper, 75% of it. 1,000 words are 75% of any newspaper, okay? And by the way, the following 1,000 words in popularity from 1,000 to 2,000 will increase your ability to understand that newspaper only by four or five percent. What this means is that 1,000 words in English you read the New York Times and can understand most of it. 1,000 words in French you read Le Monde and understand it. Isn't that encouraging? By the way, you find this list, first of all, at my website. You can check out eroncats.net. Or you just type on Google, 1,000 popular words, English, Spanish. You have um, actually several websites. It's called Word Frequency Lists. Now, how shall we remember words? And with this, we will conclude. When my daughters uh, started learning English, my daughters speak Hebrew. That's what we speak in uh, Israel. And English is not their native tongue. Hebrew is. So I told them, play with associations. For example, blue. Blue is, you know, like a fish. Imagine in the blue sea making bubbles. Blue, 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 blue in the blue sea. There was once a kid that told me that he remembers the word carpet because if you drive your car and go over a pit, you have a carpet. Funny, isn't it? License. Somebody told me that she remembered the word license because lawyers get a license to lie if it makes sense. Which is actually what law is all about. Not all about. But that's a wonderful way of uh, remembering words. Okay? And there's a nice joke about a German guy, French guy, and an Israeli that study English. And the teacher asks them to give an example of a sentence that includes the colors pink, green, and yellow. So the German guy thinks of an example and he says, I was walking along the green fields and I saw a yellow sunflower and pink rose. And the French guy said, I went to a restaurant, I ate green frog, 
I put yellow mustard on the green frog and for dessert I had pink strawberry pudding. And then they asked the Israeli, do you have an example? And he said, yes, I have a very good example. When the telephone goes green, green, I pink it up and say yellow. That was better than the turtle and the snails, wasn't it? Dear friends, I wish to thank you for watching this lecture. Use these methods. Pay attention, be interested, be enthusiastic, organize things, use acrostics abbreviations, connect things to different locations. You will see how your memory really, really improves, okay? Once again, you are welcome. I will be really happy if you write me. I'm on Facebook and my website, eroncats.net. Let me know that you've seen this program. Talk to me, ask me questions. I'll be, I will be really happy to be your friend, okay? Final exam. What was in the bed? Fish. The fish was on the floor instead of a carpet. Carpet we used as a dress. Who had a dress? The dog. Where was the dog? Inside a car. What passed the car? TV set. TV was used as a pot. What was stuck in the pot? Cigarette that fell from the, came out of a trumpet, right? What fell on the head? Cats. From the eighth floor, nothing happens to them. Snow. Who sniffed the room? Kangaroo that cannot go backwards. Behind my shoulder. Soviets who took guns to space. The bottom reminds us of the tigers, 7,000 tigers in private homes. And finally, the toes, the joke with the turtle and the snail. You have a wonderful memory. Use it. Thank you very, very much. That was absolutely fascinating, wasn't it? And now, after I hope you enjoyed that lecture very much, as did I, we have a special surprise for you. We have someone all the way from Israel who is going to come and talk to us. Who do you think it could be? It's Aaron Katz. Aaron, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi. Hi. First of all, welcome to our little chat. We're going to have a little chat about you. And um, also, we're going to be trying something out. But we'll, we'll talk about that later, perhaps. Um, now, I did give an introduction about you before we started the lecture but i also know something really interesting about you i know that you hold the israeli guinness book of records title in memory stunts what what does that mean well uh, that means that i was given a, a number somebody read me a number consisting of 500 digits and uh, i repeated them from the beginning to the end and from the end to the beginning but um I would like to emphasize that I am not a genius and I don't have a super memory. I have a trained memory and everybody can do this. That's very, very, that's a good distinction to make. But I want to, this number thing, I mean, some people forget, you know, telephone numbers and they've only got six or eight digits. How on earth do you remember a number? Because with the, a thing, you do the word association, which is, makes sense. But how do you make a number make sense? Well, actually, like, you know, everything else in life, we have to sometimes think outside the box. And uh, believe it or not, I don't remember numbers. I'm, a, I'm using an ancient Jewish system called the Gimatria, which is based on converting numbers to letters. So actually, each number from zero to nine is a letter for me. And every two uh, numbers are a word. So. 20 uh, digits, for example, 20 numbers are 10 words. And 10 words you can remember, you know, using associations, creating a story. So that's my method. Yeah, it's association again, but just used for numbers. That's fascinating. Right, um, I have another question. 
Now, most children, and we have a lot of children and students watching us today, they have a good memory, right? Because they don't have lots of things to remember like we do when we're older. Except, obviously, sometimes when their parents ask them to remember something, they tend to forget. But that's, another, that's a different story. Now, as we grow older, do you have some tips or tricks for us to remember more? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, we we are, you know, we live in a society in, in an age where we have a lot of distractions, you know, WhatsApp and Facebook and Instagram, and, and we are constantly looking at the phone. Mm -hmm. And these uh, distractions actually interfere with our normal memory. So we should make an effort in remembering stuff instead of writing them down. We should be more enthusiastic and curious about the outside world, not only what's inside you know, our telephone. And um, I actually have a series of books, it's called the, the Memory Master Series, helping uh, kids remember better numbers and languages and uh, everything they want. So be interested, pay attention, you know, be enthusiastic and uh, find interest in everything you do. Yeah, that's really, I don't know if you could see my face at point when you said don't write everything down because I write everything down. Sometimes I write, don't forget to wash your hair, that kind of thing, because I have. <laughs> I wasn't always like this, but as I grow older, I've had a, a, a worse and worse memory, you know. And I was wondering, I saw you do it and you made it look so easy, but can I do what you do? Well, Carice, I don't know. Let's check it out. Oh, no. I mean, no. <laughs> you've seen my lecture, right? No, I, I, I was just going, I was waiting for a yes or no answer here. <laughs> okay, no, we're going we're gonna to try it out on you. You listen to the uh, lecture, so let's see if you remember. Do you remember what fell on the head? Um, hold on. Uh, uh, falling cats. Exactly. Cats and from which floor they, nothing happens um, to them? They can fall from the um, eighth story. Eighth story, wonderful. Okay, and, and the nose, Hold on. what does that remind you? Um, the, the kangaroo, was it the kangaroo? Yeah, um, what's the problem with the kangaroo? Oh, that I liked this go. one. The kangaroo can't go backwards. Right. That's a fascinating Behind fact. the shoulders, do you remember? Um, um, Yes, wait, hold on. Yes, Russian, Russian cosmonaut. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Who and, took to space? What uh, did they take to space? Uh, a gun, guns, guns. A gun, right, in our bottom. Hold on. I know there was a horse somewhere, but it's not a horse. Hold on. Um, a tiger, a tiger. And yes. the, uh, the tiger. Fact about the tiger. There are 7,000 tigers in homes in America. It was America, right. yes. 7,000 tigers living in private homes in America. And, which... Maurice, you're almost there oh, for no. the million dollar question on your toes. Uh, it was a joke, it was a joke, and it was a snail and a turtle. Exactly. <gasps> so. It works, doesn't it? It really does. It's so, oh, it's so interesting. I'm going to start using it every time I can't find my keys, I think. And every time I exactly. need to, I need to. I think we should not give up on our memory and we should know that we can rely on it yes. and count on it and we can use our memory. I, I, love, I love these tricks and I am, I promise you, going to start using them. At least it will save me writing everything down. I should hide this now. Um, Aaron, uh, last thing before we go. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I'm sure that the children have really, really enjoyed your lecture. And I really think that now when their exams and assignments come up, they start actually using them and training their brain so that then when they get older, they won't have to write everything down like I do. Um, anyway, moving on. We know that you're also a best-selling author. Um, where can we get your books? Well, the books um, can be found on uh, Amazon. Um, I have books translated also to Italian, uh, English, many languages. Um, not yet Maltese, not I yet. hope one day in the future. <laughs> That's your next one. So, yeah, that'll be my next one. And when the world will open, I will really be happy to uh, come to Malta and meet all the children. And, and me. Uh, we, we you coffee, also. coffee with me as well, okay? <laughs> Aaron, it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for this. Thank you very much for the invitation. The honor is mine.